thank you. Come on, let's give him a praise in the house. He's been so good, been so good. Thank you, Jesus. I'm God in the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I got a song to go. For the word of God. Can you tell God thank you? Hallelujah. I tell you, I feel good this morning. <laughs> we two of them thank you today for coming out to be with us on our worship service this morning. The Chain Breakers Ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to calm down here a little bit. We're going to have a speaker to come before you this day. Elder Wilcox. Hallelujah. We truly thank you, Lord, for him being with us today. This is Chain Breakers Minister. I am Pastor Eddie Anthony, First Lady Sandra Anthony here this morning to bring you a word of God. So I want you all to get on your feet, get ready to cheer a man on. It's going to light us up in the word of God. Elder, hallelujah, Joe Wilcox, in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's tell him thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 God is worthy to be praised. Amen. He is worthy to be lifted up. Glory to God. And I take it an honor. Glory to God. And every but that God has placed me in a place that I can deliver a word. Glory to God. And it has not has not always been like that. Glory to God. But I know where I came from, and I know where He has me at now. Glory to God. And I count it an honor. Glory to God to be able to deliver a word, glory to God. We're gonna go ahead and pray, pastor's already, the pastor already let us know where we are, glory to God, this is Chain Breakers Ministry over in Jonesboro, glory to God, and we thank you for joining us. We pray that you get a word that will feed your soul on today. We're gonna go ahead and pray, glory to God. And Lord, we just thank you for being God. We thank you, Lord, for our Savior. We thank you, Lord, for salvation. We thank you for understanding. We thank you, Lord, that you open up our mind each and every day. We thank you that you're changing us, making us so hated for to be a people, God, that we can understand who we are. Kingdom tears, oh God. We praise you, we magnify, we say let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, Y'all may be seated, amen. Amen. It's a wonderful place, amen. To be in God. It is a wonderful place to be in God. Glory to God. I think about the captivity when I lived in captivity to the, to the bondage of the world. Thinking I had to do certain things to be successful. Or thinking I had to do certain things to have money. Or thinking I had to be, do certain things, glory to God, that did not line up with the word of God. But he began to teach me, amen. Hallelujah. And I want to share, glory to God, with everyone on this morning what God has given me, amen, that it may help your soul, glory to God. Amen. Because I understand there's only one way, and that's God's way. <laughs> Any other way, glory to God. Oh, there's other gods that's out there that will try to lead you, glory to God. But there's only one true living God that can lead us into a place of wholeness. That we don't just have to exist here on earth. Amen. But we can live a whole life inside of him. Glory to God. Amen. He is awesome. Amen. 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 Now you can go ahead. And... Amen. Amen. God is able to do a seemingly and above. Amen. We're going to go ahead and begin to read from Exodus 20. Amen. God wants to help us to understand how to worship him. Amen. We worship him in spirit and in truth. Exodus 20, and we're going to be reading from verse 1 through 11. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, 
which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, yeah. out of the house of bondage. Yeah. Amen. God has brought us out of a place of bondage. When we know the life that we lived before we became believers, be before we begin to trust God, when we know what the life that we live, that we know that many times that we was trying to, to, to come out of that life, times even when we got so tired, we got so frustrated that, you know, we saw that there was no hope. And we, some of us even just gave up and said, you know what, I'm just going to always be like this. And we made that in our, our mind and began to live a lifestyle that God was not pleased of. You see many people even today, you see them how they have gotten so frustrated they had come accustomed to a life separated from God. And that life, when they be separated from God, we begin to do things that's not godly. Do things that even that we know that's bringing destruction even to ourselves. We know things that we're doing that they can cause us harm. You know, we say you see people even go do certain things that knowing that, you know, go robbing people and stealing from people, knowing that they can go to jail for it. But they had gotten so frustrated, they had come to themselves in their mind that they believe that this is what they have to do. Why? Because they have not come to an understanding how to serve a true living God. They have not come to understand how to truly worship God. How God can bring us out of captivity. He can bring us out. They have not come to that understanding. The Bible says, he says, thou, uh, thou should not have no other gods before thee. Thou should not make unto thee any garbing images or any likeness or anything that's in heaven or above or in the earth beneath yeah. or that is in the water under the earth. Yeah. He doesn't want us to make anything out of a God. Yeah. Nothing that we can ever think of. On, you know, we were just talking about this morning how we can make even our time out of a God. You know, we say that, you know, we, we hear even we, when we was out there in the world, we, we say, I don't have time to go to church. So we'll pick up, a, you know, a Thanksgiving or we pick up Christmas and we go and to make ourselves feel good. That, you know, I did some church at least that year to make ourselves feel good. But then there's seven days in a week. And it's in that seven days. And God just asking us to set apart, set apart that one day. And then he's only asking for a few hours of that day. To just to come and worship me. Just to come and say that you appreciate what I have done for you. Just to say that, you know what, Lord, I want to hear words so I can do them more for you. Lord, I want to take my what you have given me to another level. God, I want to take what you have given me to share with somebody else. Taking out just a few hours of seven days. Just taking some time out and separating ourselves. He said he set that day apart that we can just spend some time and learn more about him. In verse 5, it says, Thou should not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, have, I am the Lord thy God, and I am a jealous God. He says, don't bow ourselves down to those things. Don't bow ourselves down to an idol. And we can make our time out of an idol. We bend ourselves to do that what we want to do. But we're bending ourselves to do things that's not God. We're bending ourselves to do things that's totally away from the things of God. We're bending ourselves by convincing ourselves that we don't have time to go to church. You know, I got time to do everything else. We got time to go to our parties. We got time to go to, to uh, you know, be our friends' house. We got time to go to work. We got time to do everything but time to hear a word from God. Got time to do everything that we want to do but not time to the God that has given us time. The God that has given us breath. The God who's working us up every day. We don't have time to bend ourselves to do the things of God or, or to follow what he has called us to do. To set some time. He said he formed the earth in seven days. Then he said he rests. He rests and he has, he has called us to rest that day. Rest within that day that we may give him worship time. He's not just doing it just that we may come to him and worship him. But if we do that in worshiping him, he gives right back to us. Because when we give time to God, when we go and worship him, we, we find that we get excited about what God is doing. We get excited about what God is about to do in our life. We get excited. And then he gives us rest. 
gives us rest, that we can really truly rest. Our soul is resting, our body is resting. Why? Because we have given to him some time. Amen. We have given him what he is required. We have given him, glory to God, we have taken the time out of our busy schedules yeah. and say, Lord, I'm just going to acknowledge you. Yeah. I just, yes, my life is busy. Yes, I got a lot of things going on. Yeah. Yes, I understand, Lord, there's so many things that's pulling on me now. But, Lord, I'm going to take out some time just to give to you. Because, Lord, I appreciate you. I know what you've done for me now. I know that you brought me out of captivity. I know that you brought me out of Egypt. But, Lord, I appreciate what you have done for me on today, God. And because I appreciate you, Lord, I want to do the more for you. I want to draw closer to you, God. I want the more of you in my soul that I can, what's inside of me can be poured out on the natural. Because of what you pointed to me, it can be poured out as living water. Glory to God. To touch somebody. And then he goes on and says, in verse 5, he says that, Visiting the iniquities of the father upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. To them that hate me. Now you take that word, hate. And what is basically saying that you have become an enemy of God. Hateful. An emotion, an emotion that rages against the things of God. So you know, you, we ask ourselves why we see so much corruption in the world. We ask ourselves why our children are being so much, uh, so disobedient. The answer is because we ourselves have hated God. And he said, now that you hate me, now that, now that you're doing what you want to do, and now that you don't take out the time to hear a word, and now that you're following other gods, and because when we do our thing, we're following other gods. Now that you're doing all of that, he says, now your children is going to do the same thing, and the generation after generation is going to do the same thing. Now, they're going to take it to another level. They may not do the same sin. They may not rebel the same way that we rebel. They're going to take it to another level. Each generation takes it to another level. That's why we see so much corruption in the world. Because why? Because we have come to a place that we hate God. The Bible says you're going to love one and hate the other. So now, the Bible, so now, that, now that the Bible is telling us where we are, what are we going to do? Are we going to continue our ways? Are we going to continue rebelling as our God? Are we continue forming of the God? Forming other God. We say that we, you know, we say that we don't bow down to them. But when we bend our ways to those things, we're bowing down. When you bend your ways, when you say, I'm, I'm going to bend my way, I'm going to do this, what I want to do. When we bend our ways, we're bowing down to that God. Whatever that God is, we're bowing down to that God. But he, gets, but he, gets, he goes on and says in verse 6, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now this love, it says it's a strong emotional love that desires God, that desires his presence, that yearns for his presence. Not just with our lips. See, the love that desires for presence is just more than just, uh, you know, just from our mouth. The desire there's a feeling that you just inside what's inside of you just desiring the more of God. So we ain't gonna make up excuses why I can't go to church. Because I desire him. I desire the more of him because I want him. I want his presence. I want his teaching. I want him to satisfy my soul every day. I want him to satisfy my soul 365 days of the year. I want him to satisfy and complete me every day. That I don't just exist. He on earth, but I'm satisfied. My soul is satisfied inside of Him, desiring that love, that emotion that says, "Lord, I just want You." <laughs> Lord, I don't care where I am. I don't care what I'm going through. Lord, I, I just want You. Lord, I don't care how much money I don't have or how much I do have. But Lord, I just want the more of You. Lord, I don't care what my situation is today, but Lord, because I just want the more of You. That if I know I just, if I know I continue desiring You, I know that You already said in Your Word that everything is already taken care of. Everything, Lord, You ain't already worked it out. All I gotta do is continue, Lord, following You. He says, that "If I love You, I will keep." When we love Him, we keep His commandments. We keep His commandments. It's not, it's not a hardship. 
It's not something I'm forced to do. It's something I desire to do. It's something I love to do. It's something I'm satisfied in doing. It's something that completes me. Why? Because I have a love, a compassion for him. Lord, everything that's inside of me, like I'm hurt. You know, many times we see when we break up from somebody, you know, we're in relationships and, and you know, we get our heart broke. And, and when we get our heart broke, we feel that pain. When we begin to do things opposite of God, we should, we should feel that pain. We should feel that hurt. That we, why? Because we disappointed our father. Why? Because we did something that was outside of his commandments. We did something that he was not pleased of. And it should hurt us deep down inside. And if we don't feel that pain and we just satisfy and say, you know what? I just did it and everybody doing it. Then we should check ourselves where we are. Because when you truly love somebody, when you truly had that compassion for somebody, when that person truly satisfies your soul, it should hurt you when you hurt them. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we should know that we know, glory to God. Where are we? Check ourselves, glory to God. Do inventory on ourselves. When we begin to say, you know what? Everybody is doing it, so I must be okay. If everybody's sinning in this world, if everybody's rebelling in this world, we got to be the last person standing. We got to have a made up mind, glory to God, that I'm going to be the last person standing. No matter what it costs me, I'm going to be the last person standing. And while I'm standing, glory to God, I'm going to continue testifying about his goodness. Testifying that he is a God that can deliver. That he is a God that can bring us out. He is a God that can bring us out of Egypt. Or bring us out of our bondage. Bring us out of our mindset of saying this, glory to God, I got to keep on doing what I'm doing when it's away from the things of God. Trusting God. Glory to God. Trusting that he can bring you out. Trusting that he can deliver you. Trusting him, glory to God, that he is, he's able to do all things, glory to God, exceedingly and above, glory to God. All we got to do is just trust him, glory to God. Hey, hallelujah. Just trust him. Knowing that it all is going to be all right, glory to God. Why? Because we serve a mighty God, glory to God. A mighty God. A mighty God. Glory to God. And verse 7 says, Thou shalt not take the name of thy God in vain, and the Lord will hold him guiltless in taking his name in vain. Glory to God. Where is your intents when you're using the name God? Is your intents on defiling your God? The God in heaven. The God who wakes you, wakes you up every morning. The God who breathes into your lungs to give you life, glory to God, to go on to see you another day. The God that calls your eyes to begin to see. The God that gives you legs to walk. The God that touches you every day, glory to God. The God that touches your mind that your mind don't go crazy. Hallelujah. The God that gives you strength to say, Lord, the God, glory to God. Where is your intents when you're using the name of God? Check your intents, glory to God. Where is your intents when you're using the name of God? Then it goes on in verse 8. He says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The sixth day thou shalt labor and do all thy works. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Thy God in it thou shalt do any works. Thou shalt do not, thou shalt do, thou, sh, uh, thou do, <laughs> my God, it thou shalt not do any works. Amen. Thou shalt die nor thy sons, nor thy daughters, thy maid servants, thy maid servants, thou cattle, thou, thy strangers that within thy house. That's all right. Glory to God. That seven days. He gives us the rest. Yes. That seventh day, glory to God. Yes. That seventh day that you set apart and see, this is the day I'm going to worship the Lord. Yes. He gives us that seventh day that we can get some rest. Because yes. he knows that mankind, humans, will get so busy, yes. glory to God, we'll wear ourselves out. Yes. So he just say, I want to restore you. Yes. I want to strengthen you. Yes. I want to encourage you. Yes. So put that seventh day to, to, to the side. Come and worship me, that I can strengthen you. That I can give you what you need, that you can continue doing that what I call you to do. That you continue doing what you, what you desire to do. That you can continue going. But we got to put that day aside. That day aside, that we're acknowledging God. 
that we're showing God that we truly, truly appreciate what he is doing in our life. And where we can take out and say, Lord, I'm taking this time out to come worship you, to come and spend some time with you, that you may give me some knowledge. And as that knowledge has been stirred up inside of me, it becomes wisdom. And as that wisdom becomes stirred up inside of me, I can share that what I have with somebody else. That somebody else, glory to God, don't have to be bound by the things that we used to have to be bound by. Being delivered, being set free, come out of captivity and helping somebody else to come out also, glory to God. Come out, amen. And then he goes on and say that in verse 11, for in the sixth day, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is them in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. He said he made that day holy. Amen. He said he sanctified that day. That's a day that we come together and just worship him. Amen. Not rushing through the service. Not just trying to hurry up and say, I'm glad when this is over. But enjoying the feast. Sitting at the table and just enjoying the feast. And then enjoying the fellowship, glory to God. And the believers in God. Coming together and saying, Lord, this is a day that you made. And Lord, that you set this day aside for me just, just to come and enjoy you. And then to get full on your word. And as I continue getting full on your word, Lord, glory to God, I become so full on your word, God. It's like when a man said, glory to God, Lord, when Jesus said that the rocks, if, you, if I try to shut somebody up, the rocks begin to cry out. So much of that word is inside of us, glory to God. And we are so full with the word. So we take that word to the streets. We take that word to our neighbors. We take that word to our jobs. Why? Because we full of it. And as we are full of it, we want somebody else to be delivered from the captivity, to come out of slavery, glory to God. We want somebody else's mind to be renewed. We want somebody else to be set free. We want somebody else to be strengthened. We want somebody else to lift up their hung down head. Glory to God. Why? Glory to God. They let the king of glory come in, glory to God. Who is this king of glory to God? Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, he is, glory to God. The one that set us free, glory to God. Oh, we have that desire, why? Because we have a love for God, glory to God. We have a compassion for God. We have an emotion for God, glory to God. Hey, a love, glory to God. A fire that cannot be put out, glory to God. No matter what we experience in life, glory to God. It's a fire that cannot be put out. Hallelujah. Why? Because we have a love, glory to God, that goes beyond the natural understanding, glory to God. Because it's compassion for God, glory to God. A love, glory to God. Hey, when our soul it cries out for the more God. Oh, when our mind is constantly renewed, how to understanding, glory to God, how to walk upright and keep his commandments, glory to God. When we enjoy each and every day, glory to God. Oh, for what he have us in this moment, glory to God. Understanding that this moment that he have us in is a season. And this season, glory to God, will not always be the same as the next season, glory to God. But in this season, I will learn what I need to learn, glory to God, so I can be what he want me to be in my next season, glory to God. Because in my next season, glory to God, there's a greater promise than this season. Hope why? Because I have grown to be in a place with God. Hallelujah. Why? Because I am not a child anymore. I don't need milk, milk anymore. But I have understanding, glory to God. I can feast on the milk, glory to God, on the meat that God is giving me. Every day, glory to God. That meat that he's giving, hallelujah, Lord. I'll chew on it daily. Why? Because I meditate on his word day and night, glory to God. Why? Because my soul enjoys the Lord. My soul loves the presence of God. My soul is satisfying him. My soul, glory to God, choose not to serve another God. But my soul is whole, glory to God. Oh, because I understand where he brought me from. Hallelujah. Where he brought me from, glory to God. And where he's taken me to, glory to God. Hallelujah. The joy of my salvation. I'm enjoying it in this season. And I can't wait to my next season, glory to God. Why am I, mean, glory to God, have great expectation for the next season? Glory to God. He says, greatly, glory to God, the things that we should do, hallelujah, when we have our hope in him. 
having our hope in him, not choosing nothing else, not choosing another God, not choosing to make excuses, not giving up in well-doing, but holding on, holding on in this season. And we can enter into our next season, glory to God, enduring the hardship of this world, enduring the hardship, the things that we're experiencing day by day, but loving it, glory to God. Not complaining in it, glory to God, but loving it, loving it. Why? Because we understand in this season, glory to God, that he has allowed us to dwell in. Glory to God, there's a season that we grow. It's a season that he's feeding us the more. We take the, the knowledge that he's given us and give that wisdom to someone else. Because why? Because God said the promise, glory to God, the promise that we are kings and queens. Kings and queens. Oh, glory to God. We're not, li- we're not to live below, glory to God. Beneath. But we are living above, glory to God. That's what he called us to live. That's what he created us to live. So when we begin to see people living beneath what God has called them to live, we take that what he has given us. We take the hardship that we went through, glory to God. And we learn how to enjoy that. We learn how to count those situations yes, joy. Yes. Learn how to count our hardship is joy. Glory to God. Oh, with all joy. Glory to God. Learning how to ca- count it as joy. That we can share that glory to God. With a victorious testimony. Sharing, to, sharing it with somebody. Oh, and as we speak in that thing with the joy and understanding. Glory to God. It goes forth with power, glory to God, that it will touch a dying world. Why? Because we learn how to count it, Joe. We learn how to enjoy every season. Glory to God. We learn how to enjoy every season. Enjoy, glory to God. Rejoicing in all things. Loving God, glory to God. Truly loving God. Not just with our lips with everything that's inside of us. Having a strong emotion for the God that we know that's able to deliver is from Egypt, from the hardship of life, from the things that we go through each and every day, from the things that we know that we came out, from how he set us free, glory to God. We're not bound to things anymore, but we set free. He's a God has called us to live and don't die. Every situation that we experience on life, we take the opportunity to worship him. We take that opportunity to say, Lord, thank you for allowing me to go through this situation that I can learn how to worship you on another level. That I can learn how to worship you in a different location. That I can learn how to worship you, what I'm going through. That I can persevere through this situation. That I can push past my emotions or feelings, what I'm going through. And look to the prize. The prize of just serving you. The prize that I can truly enter into your gates with thanksgiving. That I can enter into your courts with praises. So when I'm coming to you, God, I'm worshiping you. And I'm saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Not with a sad heart, but with a heart of rejoicing. Glory to God. With a heart that's Lord, Lord, just say, Lord, I praise you, God. Glory to God. He's worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Coming to a place of worship. Coming to a place of true worship. Worshiping God in spirit and in truth. That's what our life. Everything that's inside of us. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Worshiping him with all that we have. When we was in the world, we hated God. And we saw the sins that we did, the things that we did, the rebellion that we did. How our children are adapted to that lifestyle. But now that we have crossed over it. There's others that we have to help to understand that their children are doing what they're doing because of life that they see that their children and children, their children and children would do. 
God wants us to come out and help somebody else to come out of Egypt that we won't be the only ones. Help somebody else. Yes, amen. Amen. God is worthy to be praised and he wants to help you to be set free. He wants to help you to come out of where you are. If you're in a place that you don't know God, he wants to know, help you to understand him, who, who he is. He wants to set you free from the bondage of wherever Tested. someone is living. He wants to deliver you that you may live a whole life inside of him. But you got to learn how to trust him. Find a church home that you can be fed the word of God. Find somewhere, pray and ask God to lead you somewhere that you can be fed the word of God. And as you've been fed the word, you can be delivered from bondage. Amen. Amen. We thank you for joining us on the day. We pray that you got something. Amen. 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 Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody tell God thank you. Hallelujah.